Hello and welcome to the Daily Records uh, latest live sessions. I'm here with Justin Curry and Tommy Riley. Uh, Justin, probably best known for his work with Delamitri, uh, the legendary indie band who had a string of uh, hit albums and singles. And he has since gone solo. He's just about to release his second solo album, The Great War. Uh, the follow-up to the critically acclaimed What Is Love For and Justin and Tommy are also heading out on tour together. Tommy, who you probably recall from the Orange Unsigned talent contest which he won, landed himself a deal with a and Records and released his debut album Words On The Floor. Tommy also back having newly completed his uh, follow-up album. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, with Justin. Justin, um, a couple of people have said to me that this is probably your best work. Yeah, how do you feel about it? Um, I still really like the last album, uh -huh. the, the last solo record, because it was exactly what I set out to do. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I don't have much perspective on it. To be honest, it's still a bit fresh, and it's not actually out there yet. Once it's out there, then it leaves my it leaves my harbour and is no longer attached to me. I so, think, like the the last album, this seems like an intensely personal album. Yeah, bits of it are, bits of it. The last album was completely personal and deliberately so because I thought, well, you're in a band, you've got a band identity. You can't, when you're in a band, you can't really stand there and sing songs that are um, like credibly sort of autobiographical and introspective and well, self indulgent, basically. Uh, but when you're own, you own, you can get away with that. So, uh, so your self indulgence went the first levels one. have. Um, yeah, this, yeah, this is not quite as self indulgent as the first one. Uh, it's a bit more, bits of it a bit more breezy. And it's, there's some quite happy songs on it as well, for, which surprised me, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, your, the album was released on Ryko Discs, and I think in the past you were, is it A&M Records that yep. Delamitri was signed to? Well, I think I heard earlier on, just off camera, you were talking to Tommy about the pros and cons of being on an independent label as mm -hmm. opposed to being on a major label. Mm -hmm. um, what's the advantage to being on Ryko Discs? Um, well, complete creative control effectively, I mean that was virtually in the contract, so all I do with Ryko is I, they give me a bit of money, I go away and spend it recording an album and then I give them the album and they can either release it or not release it. Mm -hmm. And that's it, in fact they, they just they really just licensed the record from me for 10 years, so I get it back after 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do with it. But, um, and Tommy, you're, you're back with another album, tell us about yeah. that, I don't, I don't even know the title at this stage, I've uh, heard various songs. It's from. called, uh, it's called Hello One Tommy Riley. Uh -huh. And uh, it's like it's. I'm really excited about it. I just get. I'm really happy to get make another one. It was fun doing the first one, and this time it was a much more lo-fi project. Uh, did it sort of in my friend Roddy Hart, his studio, and it was a lot more laid back this time. Mm -hmm. Just sort of two of us in there working up similar setup to last time, but without. Um, yeah, I guess sort of without the pressures of being on. Major, so like so what happened there, because everybody saw you on this TV programme, Orange Unsigned, and then, you know, there was a kind of whirlwind of activity, you were you, did, you got to do all the festivals, um, you was, released yeah. a couple of singles, and then the album came, and and presumably at some stage a and went, well that's us, we've done. Well that was, I think that was the deal, was, uh, you know, uh, go do a record, and uh, and I was, I was loving it, you know, I was, um, I think, yeah, last year was mad, I can barely remember it, it was madness, we just went to gigs and I think we went to pretty much every festival that happened last summer. I was talking to uh, Aaron Collins recently and he was saying he's a huge fan of yours, he, he wanted to produce your album apparently and he was really annoyed when Bernard Butler got that job, so I mean look, two really uh, excellent people to be behind your music and yeah. praising your songwriting he's, as well. He's, he's, um, he's a really nice guy, amazing. It was really it was really cool to meet him, actually. And I went down to see him again recently when they were doing the 1990s and him doing the tour. Uh -huh. and it was just good to catch up with them all and like Grace. Get, I got to know them a bit when I was sort of using the studio and got to know his son well. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh -huh. got to sort of meet everyone. He's always, every time I met him, he's just been nothing but brilliant about it. Really likes my, seems to really like my stuff. And it's been great uh -huh. to have someone like that, like it. Nice. Now, uh, Justin, you're heading out on tour, mm -hmm. uh, playing some dates. Where, where are you heading to? Uh, you? Just five days in England and one in Edinburgh. Uh -huh. and well, Edinburgh's kind of in England, isn't it? And you've got Tommy <laughs> yeah. on board with you as well. Indeed. Is he doing the Scottish date or is he doing a few of the He's doing the, the, the UK tour. But oh. it's, it's a really short wee thing. I, I couldn't get as many gigs as I wanted to because I 
I did a jazz tour in March and that put a lot of the promoters <laughs> off. <laughs> Any excuse? No, no, no. Jazz. So, um, yeah, I'd, like, I'd wish it was longer, but unfortunately not. Um, one, one of the questions someone, uh, Paul, in, in our office said, uh, you know, this, uh, he said this, he felt this album sounded closer to the Delamitri material than anything you've done before. Well, it, it probably does to the, to the extent that on the first solo record, I, the, I, anything that sounded even vaguely like Delamitri, I, I chucked off the record. I didn't do that this time. Mm -hmm. I can't wasn't really that bothered about it this time. Is is Delamitri dead and buried forever, or is it a case I've never seen him? Well, you'd have to get you'd have to ask me and Ian that together. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, every time we discuss it, we still write songs together. And but I mean, but even if the phone was ringing off the hook with you know offers to do tours and festivals and things, which is which it definitely isn't. Uh, even if it was, I don't think we would do it because every time we envisage. Because our manager would love us to do that, because our manager's a massive Delamitri fan. Um, every time we envisage going on a stage and, you know, let's say doing a barman show as Delamitri and playing loud guitars and all that, and, uh, we just think what a horrible, sad exercise in nostalgia it would be, because they were, that was then and we had a brilliant time, and uh, just the idea of doing it again for money doesn't, seem, doesn't really appeal. Excellent, Tommy, thank you very much. Justin, thank you. Thank you.